Hello, this is Scott Washi. Sorry for the delay since my last tutorial, but I would like to start making more. So if there is a certain aspect of rigging you would like to learn more about, just leave me a comment and if I know about the topic, I'll try to make a video about it. But for now, someone recently asked me for general tips on rigging game characters, and this video is about that. So here are my general tips for making game character rigs in Maya. Tip 1. Talk with your pipeline. Before you rig anything, you should meet with the people that are going to be creating the character and using the rig so that any confusion will hopefully be addressed. You'll want to talk with the modeler to make sure he's creating good polyflow, especially around any moving areas like hands, hips, knees, feet, elbows, shoulders, and the neck. If the character needs to speak or look around, there needs to be appropriate geometry around her mouth and eyes. If there are any extra objects the character has on at all times, separating them makes it easier to weight map. Once the model is complete and the UV is finished, you are able to break the character. Animators will be most crucial to talk with because they'll be utilizing your rig the most. You should talk with them to see the different types of animations that the character will perform so you can rig accordingly. If there are any other objects the character will interact with, that should be known as well. Also, if there are any plans of character customization, like skins or outfits, then the method of creating these should be talked about with not only the animators, but programmers as well. Programmers might not have much to say about the rig, but knowing ahead of time about methods and limitations of customization are good. You should also ask about other topics, like attaching objects to the character, if the character ever gets gibbed, and animation blending should also be discussed. Tip 2. Reference. Some people say to not reference while animating a game character, but I highly suggest it. In Maya, you can update the rig periodically while animators start creating animations, even if the rig isn't fully complete. Also, you will find errors in the rig during development, so it's always good to plan for the worst. If you're not careful though, referencing creates long-winded bone names that include colons, so be aware of that if that's an issue with exporting. Tip 3. Create controls only for what you need. This may sound lazy, but if your animators don't need certain functions for a character, don't make them. It only adds to the development time, and if you reference, like in my previous tip, then you can just update the rig when the animators ask for new controls. Tip 4. Use a competent naming system. Always be aware of how you name your bones. Besides being easy to read, it will be easier to find errors. If you use the same naming system for all your characters, you could even use animations from one character on another. Also, if you reference your animations, then you can swap out character rigs and edit the animation information for the specific character, saving setup time. Tip 5. Test twice, wait once. Once a basic skeleton is created, and before extensive weight mapping, you should test your method of exporting from Maya to whichever engine you're using. For Unreal, I suggest using ActorX by far. But for most other engines, you have to use the FBX exporter, which, to put it politely, has many flaws. Make sure your character imports into your engine the correct side up. For instance, Unreal has a Z up world, and Maya is Y up. Uh, be sure your normals aren't backwards or facing the wrong way. And do a test animation to make sure everything looks okay. This is where something has horribly gone wrong in the exporting process. Final tip, learn the mirror skeleton, mirror weights, and export weights tools. Lastly, learn the mirror skeleton, mirror skin weights, and export weights tools. These will save you many hours. Mirroring the skeleton makes sure the bones are in the right position. Mirroring weights may not be perfect, especially on an asymmetrical character, but they go a long way. Also, exporting weights lets you fix a rig if something went wrong in the previous step like missing geometry or a missing bone. You'll have some cleanup to do after you import a weight map, but it's much better than redoing all of your weighting work. Thanks for listening, 
And if you'd like to see any future tutorials on specific rigging topics, post a comment and I'll try to get around to it. Peace.